What up my freaks, Ruinason the site here with part 10 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Karl Franz campaign. So as we saw last time, the Norskins have come down, the Scaling sailing south towards the riches of Marienburg. Their berserkers however failed to achieve anything as Karl intercepted them and the ordered ranks of the Imperial Pike and Shot, or Pike and Sword I guess in her particular case, uh, did destroy most of those Zerkers. There is something remaining of the army however, I guess we will probably want to destroy that. I'm just now thinking, do we want to do this via I, uh, auto resolve. Do we want to risk our very hurt units getting even more hurt when we have such problems with casualty replenishment? 13 turns is pretty ridiculous, and it's six turns on the uh, and six turns on the encamp stand, so it's still crazy long. We need more, uh, we need more casualty replenishment rate. Is there a casualty replenishment rate here? We can increase it by hosting Festag. Though the problem with doing so is then we'll lose the 30% campaign movement range increase that we would get next turn, which we may need depending on where we decide to move. Hmm. But even a single turn of this might still be useful. Hmm. All right, you know what? Let's first let's move in. Let's figure this out. Uh, you're gonna move into encamp stance right there, Carl. You are going to get a point. Let's get the emperor's men to continue buffing our great swords as much as we can, especially as we're about to get some more of them. And then we will get, let's say, earthing for you, so that you don't fail. And we are getting somewhat okay in terms of our prestige. Let us get another Imperial adjutant, shall we? Uh, it's time to get that Halberdier unit. I think that they will come in very useful as it will be a melee unit that we can sacrifice whenever needed. And there we go. Quite a lot of uh, prestige, but at this point I think it's uh, it's going to be friends. worthwhile they to have them in here. Uh, let's also put that in this army and we can replace... Mmm, oh man. I don't want to replace the Scribe because of the campaign movement range. I think we have to replace the Scarecrow banner. We could also let go of the Pit Fighter, but I'm not entirely sure whether it's actually... You know, 10% Vigor loss is not that big of a deal. And you know what? Uh, let's take you, Patrol, Con Patrol Captain Halberdiers, rather. Uh, and I'm now thinking that the Scarecrow banner might actually be pretty good on you, Gregor. You are constantly fighting bats because of the undead constantly attacking you. So you can get some use out of that. There we go. Alrighty, that makes a little bit more sense to me. Nude, you are going to come in as a reinforcement and leech some XP. While Carl moves in on this. Fight for our nation! All right, I, I honestly, I don't trust the auto resolve. Let's just fight this really quickly, shall we? We'll just set this up and then uh, try to take minimum casualties, but I'll play it at max speed so that uh, it isn't too much of a waste of time. Normally I'd auto resolve, but not while our casual troop punishment rate is in such problematic, uh, uh, such problematic state. Such a problematic state. Good job, Ruinus. You can use articles. All right. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, let's set this up, Carl. You can be out for I. You can be out front. Start deployment. You are going to summon those Imperial adjutants on top of yourself. Let's set the mortar up in the back. I just do a quick little setup. You guys all can spread out. Two crossbows to the side because you'll probably be fighting. Uh, uh, enemy Kev, and then we'll send the Reichsguard to counter one. Yeah, you know what we can do. Send Carl to counter one, then Reichsguard to counter the other. Then we'll go more crossbows, like so, in the center. And then you guys up here. Here. It doesn't really matter how we set up at the end of the day, because more likely than not, the enemy won't actually reach our lines. Just due to the fact that we are... Uh, we are still going to be using those adjutants out front. You can be out front and... Well, actually, you can be the main line out front. Like so. Hopefully you don't die. Who else has good HP? Looks like it'll be the Free Company Militia this time. So you here and you here. We'll keep the Imperial Foot on the flanks just in case. Oh, we can put them like a block in front of you, like so. And then I guess we could do the same thing here with the halberds, although I'm a little bit concerned about them just taking hits. You know what? Now let's uh, put the put you like that. Alrighty. And then we'll put smaller blocks like here. Well, actually, no. You guys are so hurt that it's probably not worth it to use you at all. Put you in hiding. 
We're here not going to interfere. By dying, I mean. And yes, dying is interference. Uh, let's put you like this. Alright. They shouldn't hopefully be able to get through our main lines. Alright, that looks good to me. Do we want to contract our lines a little bit more? Let's do like that. And like that. Alright, Carl out front. Start battle. Good, you're going to summon your units immediately. We'll go gunners right here. And halberdiers, new halberdiers rather, right here as well. And then we'll speed it up to max. I didn't forget the mortar, did I? Nope. Alright, where are the enemy cav? Alright, there's a full HP unit of cav and a not so full HP unit of cav on this side. In fact, if this is the only thing that's moving over here, we're gonna just counter you. Like so. And, oh, I forgot to turn off skirmish mode. Turn that off, please. And just fire, do your thing. Kill that enemy berserker unit because it's the enemy lord. You go after that marauder horseman if you can. You guys get ready to charge the other cross or the other crossbows, the other horses. You get ready to attack that horses. Oh, I was a little bit worried that they would find our unit, but it looks like we're okay. All right, fire on those zerkers, fire on those zerkers, and Carl's getting charged, but that's just fine. We're gonna pop that healing potion, and as soon as we're ready, I actually didn't expect them all to melee charge him. Those are ranged horses. Come on, game. What are you doing? Uh, you guys, target this, please. Ooh. Enemy ranged units. Uh, maybe we send our wizard in to tie them up. Alright, you go after that. How are we doing otherwise? You guys go after the ranged units, actually. Would be a decent option. Buff up. Move forward. I know I said I was going to speed this up, but the enemy is actually getting a little bit closer than I'd like. And you, just tie the enemy up. Just charge him. You don't actually have to do damage. Just prevent them from firing for a few seconds. You can pop your Potion of Toughness as well, as it'll help you in uh, terms of stopping the enemy. Alright, nice. Alright, you, summon unit, doing good. You guys move forward a little bit, everybody else is firing. And we got our reinforcements coming in. Charge those Marauder Hunters, you guys after this please. Alright, kill. And charge into the back of those units. Alright, we good? Should be good in any second now. Alright, you, stop getting hurt, please. <laughs> stop exploding, you cowards. Alright, attack, attack, attack. And can we speed it up now? Oh, oh, don't don't get charged, please. I didn't think those Elberdeers would break right now. Nah, it's okay, the enemy army's done. We got all those healing potions out, and the battle's over, and we can call it here before our mortars kill any of our troops. Alright, let's see what we got here in terms of losses. One. Damn. <laughs> It's always frustrating when it's one. Somehow it's more frustrating than if it was like three or five. Like just the one idiot managed to get himself killed. <laughs> uh, I wonder who it was. Hopefully it wasn't one of the bordermen, but it doesn't matter because they'll heal up to full. Still though. It's the principle of the thing, damn it. Alrighty, well obviously the army will be destroyed because we already defeated them last round. This is them escaping, and this is just us avoiding extra casualties. Uh, wow, barely any prestige, but a uh, decent amount of cash. Lovely, pardon the captives. What are we at here? 7.9k, that's not too bad at all. Uh, Carl, you are immediately going to go into encamp stance. We are going to... Hmm. Actually, there's no point in switching this, is there? Because it would activate, I think... Would it, would this activate before or after? Huh. I don't know. Let's not risk it, then. Uh, if we're not going to risk it, then it's fine. Nude. Now, the question with you, my friend, is whether we keep you around right now, and I'm not so sure that we want to. In the sense that... First of all, you all move, to, uh, move to Middenstag. I'm not sure... Then we want to pay for you right now. We'll bring him back because he has knightly heritage, which is going to be good. He's specifically a Grand Master built out to control knights, so we will bring him back. But for now, 270 is a bit steep. Out. Alrighty, next up we'll have to decide whether we actually attack Kurun or not. And I'm kind of on the fence about this. On the one hand, we very well could. There's no way that this little half stack uh, will be able to defend against Carl's army, even hurt as it is. On the other hand, if we leave them alone for now, it would allow them to destroy the undead here for us. And honestly, Bretonia is kind of in shambles right now anyway. There's orcs and Skaven all over the place. 
do we actually even want to move in here at this current time? And the only reason that I'm thinking that we could declare war on them is because A, well, we're right there within striking yes. distance, uh, but also B, because we are going to probably get a war declaration from them at some point. That said, that'll expected, probably only happen once the Barrel Legion and Musiar are both dead. Or at least one of them is dead. He's probably not going to attack us while these guys are all threatening him. Hmm. You know what, maybe it would be better to go after Festus. Here's the thing, I think that going after Bretonia benefits us more, whereas going after Festus benefits the Empire more. And we gotta be a good little Emperor and we gotta work, uh, we gotta look out for the rest of the Empire more than our own Reichland faction. Yeah, we could advance and get more, uh, uh, we could get more money by advancing into Kuran. But this way, if we take out Festus, or at least badly hurt Festus, these guys won't be in trouble. And though you guys have been suggesting to actually farm Festus, I am worried about the fact that he could just continue spreading plagues forever. And the plagues are just extraordinarily annoying. If we could get his defeat trade on just Carl, I would be, uh, I would be happy with that alone. Uh, anyway, Grunberg, let us upgrade you to the next level, for now. We are also going to delete the farm. You guys have been talking about uh, casual, or not casualty replenishment, but rather economic buildings, and we're about to start on that. We've been waiting for the tier threes on the uh, on the minor settlements. We needed them all upgraded, which is why we had to have as much growth as possible. But we'll be building the clothiers or weaver, uh, uh, the weaver industry building line in all of these territories the now. Uh, we will also be deleting you in two turns or three turns. This will be replaced by this rally field that's being built here, but of course can't be fully replaced until Aelhart Ail is uh, ready. Alrighty, now, what else can we do this turn? Uh, Gregor. Hmm. And get your pistol core. We probably should get your pistol core no matter what. You know what, fine. If you're gonna be a defender, and you're gonna have a Defender of Men, which gives you further ammunition and reload time reduction, you might as well buff it up even further with Pistol Core. Then we have to decide, do we want two mortars or three mortars in Carl's army? So assuming that we give him... Assuming that we give him three Reichsguard... Alright, three Greatswords, four Greatswords, wait, we have... Three right now, and one Reichsguard. So, one, two, mm, three, four units out. Then a Mortar. That's all the free company. Hmm, we'll want to replace the Death Jacks with the Silver Bullets eventually, so they don't necessarily have to be in here. Silver Bullets get accessed at either rank 15 or 16, I don't remember. But we can have, like, the silver bullets and then two sets of bordermen and then two uh, null and handgunners or something like that. Yeah, maybe two mortars is, is optimal rather than three. Because we'll replace both mortars later on with Hellstorm rockets, but we'll see. If we want three Hellstorm rockets, we could do that as well. But I do want a fairly infantry-heavy force, and I don't want too many range units. 45, 55, what's the cost of the Halberdiers versus the Greatswords? Let me see here, bonus versus large at 10. Bonus versus infantry at 10. Honestly, their bonus versus large isn't all that much. Considering these guys do armor piercing at, let's see, 22, and these guys do armor piercing at 25. I'm just wondering whether it's worth it to take Halberdiers at all. I mean, I guess they do have Cavalry Bane, if nothing else, so we can use them to protect our flanks, but we could do the same thing by sending the Reichsguard to simply counter-charge enemy Cav. You know what, let's put a uh, let's put a second Halberdier in there for now, rather than one of the uh, Mortars. We could always build another Mortar for the... Uh, uh, wow, 840. It's really quite steep, isn't it? Hmm. And it's not crazy. We'll build more mortars for the uh, defensive locations as well. All right, fine. Let's do a halberdier for now. Imperial armies just feel like they should have some halberdiers, damn it. If nothing else. We'll probably get them 
put into another army at some point. Next up, what else do we have here? So you are being demolished, and you guys are looking good in terms of being built. Do we want to do any diplomacy? Is there anything else that we need to do right now? So trade agreements, Karaza Karak, you. Are you willing to do that non-aggression or not non-aggression? Military access pact. We'll have to declare war on the Red Eye and the Crooked Moon. But it'll keep us friendly with them, or friendlier. Maybe it'll be worth our time to do this. The faster we get defensive alliance with them, the better, because we'll be able to start generating allegiance, and thus we'll be able to start generating uh, dwarf troops that we can use. Musion's at minus 13.2, damn. How much money would you give us for this? 2k. Ugh. It's tempting. It's really tempting. But it'll screw our relationship over with a bunch of factions. Which makes it seem like it's probably not worth our time right now. Alrighty, well, we'll, uh, we'll hold off on that. Next up, we want somebody back, and that is you, Noble. Uh, with your construction cost and your control bonuses and all that good stuff. Uh, Marienburg is pretty okay in terms of control, and it's not going to be generating near as much money as Altdorf until it's a higher level. So I think we'll keep the Grandmaster here for now. And you can also have Leader of Renown just in case you uh, you recruit stuff. And I guess you can have Iron Disciplinarian as well. Because we have to move through Headhunter. Since you're just going to be buffing territories up. Also, is there any kind of uh, ancillary that we could give you that could help you in doing what you're doing here? Militiaman is recruitment cost, but we only have the one and it's on Recruiter. So, yeah. You're also going to be a recruiter, I guess, but uh, it's fine. And, oh... There's a scribe on Theon. I'm pretty sure the campaign movement range doesn't transfer to the main army, though, so we could give that to another army, actually. Yeah, we'll have to uh, we'll have to swap that out. We could also put that entertainer that's not being put to use on Theon because it doesn't go on lords, right? Yeah. All right. Well, that looks good to me, at least for now. Nothing else we could do. We could pop these two useless swords into something else. Maybe get something useful. A Scroll of Aramar. Leadership and Vigor loss reduction. You know what? That's not horrible. That's not horrible. You can hold on to this. And you can cast it on enemy lords when we fight them to screw up their leadership. And in the case of demons, the minus 25 leadership could also be somewhat significant. Alrighty. Now, is that it? For what we gotta do this turn? I guess we could also do a little bit of recruitment with either of you two. Though I'm thinking we'll probably be yes. better off just recruiting stuff on these guys. On either Recruiter or uh, Bernhard here. Because you need crossbows to replace those Empire Archers, and frankly, Hunt you need Huntsmen, which are now available. Hmm. I think we can wait. I doubt that anything's going to get through these territories, at least not right now. Yeah, alright, we'll risk it. We'll risk it. If Bretonia attacks with two stacks, maybe we'll be in trouble. But uh, I somehow doubt it. Because this guy's right here with a full stack, and then they'd be leaving Gisoro to attack. While we're not at war, at least we're not a threat. Alrighty, on the science skill points, we're good. You have moved to retake Middenstag. Let's end the turn, let's go next, I guess. We're saving a little bit of money, because we will be doing a decent amount of building shortly as well. And probably more recruiting in addition to that. Actually, it would be nice if you got an additional recruitment slot, but uh, I guess we can't do that unless we do it at the cost of the Council of Burgomeisters, but we need that for additional upgrades here. So, end the turn. Hmm, there's another thing that we probably want to do. There's a couple buildings in the wasteland that we're probably better off destroying, frankly. As in, replacing with the defensive structures. The scaling are probably going to come back. Even if Nordland is fighting them, they're clearly not doing a good enough job. Alright, looks like nobody's declaring war on us this turn. Sounds good to me, and hello, what do we have here? Uh, Vissenland has come under attack from Beastmen in the region of the Gristle Valley and are appealing to you for military assistance. Will you come to their defense and join them in battle, or leave them to fight off their attackers alone? Got to go with... 
Uh, it's a lot of money, but the thing is, auto-resolving this will give us our money back. On the other hand... Hmm, a thousand prestige, eh? And we do need the money for a bunch of buildings right now, damn it. Alright, fine, you know what, we're going to risk the prestige this time. Hire nearby mercenaries. Wish it was 500 and not 1,000. Auto-resolve this, please. This is too weak. This is not worth fighting. Oh, really? That's all the money we get? Less than 1,000 gold? Okay, then I'm glad I went for money and not... Or, uh, yeah, for money and not prestige. Because we would have gotten not as much in terms of return. Then, recruiter, Sir, you're moving out of here. You are staying as you are. And aha, Luan is going to go for Blackstone Post. That's perfect. And that really works for us. Next up... You, Carl, are going to march stance into Aleheart. Right there. Marienburg, you are going to switch to the Council of Burgomeisters. And we're going to delete the rally field and the blacksmith here. And replace them with garrisons. Altdorf, you are going to start building military or uh, money structures. Which will fund our military. And you're going to get that barracks up and running as well. And Uber's Reich will also be upgradable in a turn. Lovely. Recruiter, you are going to transfer stuff to Carl. Carl, you are going to lose Swordsman, Swordsman. You are going to lose... Free Company Militia. You are going to gain all of this stuff, and you need to lose one more unit, which I guess is going to have to be the Death Jacks for now. We might as well have our... Uh, uh, our defensive unit, or defensive lord, use that, because we'll replace one of the crossbows with the silver bullets afterwards, like I said. Alright, now, very nice. Carl, with your very cheap greatswords, 102. Man, the Sigmar's sons cost two and a half times as much as a greatsword does. It really makes me think that maybe we should take the Sigmar's sons out and just replace them with more greatswords, or Imperial Foot, when we can, obviously. While they may be unbreakable, they lack armor piercing. And, yeah, it feels like, at the cost, in terms of sheer cost, it's probably better what we're doing. You can continue recruitment, however. Damn. If only greatswords weren't so ludicrously expensive. Uh, let's get a couple more greatswords in here right now. Or wait, can you move right now? You know what, we could get those back after. I think maybe what we'll do instead is we will recruit three huntsmen. And transfer them to you. Forced to track. Hmm. Or we could rec or we could recruit general. three crossbows, transfer them here, and then all the way back here. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. We'll have to go back around either way. It makes no difference. And then I guess Bernhardt later on can recruit some great swords instead. Damn. Alrighty, we'll do it like that. Uh, we will not bother upgrading the landed estate because I think it costs too much money for what it offers us. Praise Wolfram Kusterman. Hickmanstag. And return it to once it came. I wish that gave us something. Like, past the fealty. Just give us, like, 500 prestige or something. It's a little bit unfortunate. And you're gonna start in March Dance. We're gonna send a bunch of these troops back to one of the uh, garrisons. I guess we could also spread out the Free Company Militia. Or we could put it in your army and start building you up an army. And just keep a bunch of hunters and crossbows and whatnot in these, uh, in these two territories. And then have Wolfram Kusterman move out. Depending. Either way, Carl's going for Festus now. You guys wanted Festus, Festus it would be. Next up, what do we got? Bernhard von Zonger, you are our noble. I wish I will remember your name, or I hope I will remember your name. The rest of you, I guess, are just going to stick around as you are. Uh, Reichland can build nothing, so unless there's diplomacy to do, we're going next turn. I keep looking for stuff to do, but I guess uh, we're in between things right now. Hmm. Hey, you're allied with Carcassonne. Maybe we can try to get an ally alliance going with Carcassonne as well. We shall see. Alrighty, well, that looks like another end turn to me. Unless we want to spend some more prestige now, we should probably hold on to it just in case another event comes up. Which it will. What? Cancel Burgomeisters and you. Do we want to switch you for a turn? Nah, probably not. Ah, also the entire territory here is corrupted by chaos, so we'll have to probably move through Altdorf and then northward. Which is a little bit of an annoyance, but not a big deal at the end of the day. 
On the bright side, at least this way, we're not overextending ourselves into Bretonia. And we're actually getting some use out of the forts. I mean, they're useful against the undead, but they'll also be just as useful against the Bretonians. Whereas against the orcs, the Skaven, and the Beastmen, they do nothing. Because they can underway slash equivalent over them. Uh, yeah, these guys are coming back, no doubt about it. Oh, he's still got his hex rates. Damn you and your hex rates. Uh, Pestilence Scheme for Clan Molder. I am absolutely terrified of Skaven Plague. Morgur the Shadow gave us down here. Looks like he's destroyed Paravon. Great for him, I guess. Alrighty, Carl, you're moving to Altdorf. You can actually move significantly past Altdorf. Ooh, Festus, Festi. Festi the bestie. Mm. While we're going to go after you, let's... Hmm, let's be careful about this. Uh, Carl, move to Altor for now. Just to stay out of Chaos's territory. Although I guess you could go like right there. How much healing do you need? You could actually heal up quite a lot. Yeah, fine, alright. You, leave Altdorf. You... Build up. And Ubersreich, very nice. Alright, Altdorf starting to generate a very decent amount of cash. The Gorselinar now. As expensive as this is... We're going to spend some money on guard houses. 64 money. All right. Well, it looks like we're not recruiting Ready. this turn. Uh, you are going to march stands to Altdorf. Like so. You are going to transfer troops, I guess, to Once Fort Bird Bray. I don't know where Lewin is, but it's making me nervous, so I don't, uh, I don't trust it. Uh, let's send these hunters here. Plus, we did build the hunters after all. Uh, let's go march stands right now. Stay together. Yeah, 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 stay together. And there's an Ikat Claw that. Whoa, there's two full stacks there. Oh, I don't like that at all. Uh, you know what? Do we want to transfer everything here? Well, technically, we want to transfer you spears, not swords. Or pikes in the alternative, but uh, let's do this. Tooth Free Company Militia will keep the swords out. I like so. Does that look good? Yeah, this guy looks like he could defend stuff. We'll just get some more Huntsmen in here to replace the rest of the archers in a bit. What's the difference in cost? They're 20 per unit. Yeah, I don't see why we'd be using archers. Granted, the archers have more unit count, but their damage is... Basically the same. These guys do have Vigorous, though, for when they are out of melee. They have slightly better melee stats and slightly better armor and whatnot. Very much better range, though. 190, actually outranging crossbowmen when they have the buffs. So, yeah, that'll be something to consider. Uh, you. Move back to Ale Heartweight, actually. I was going to recruit with you, but it's no longer possible, is it? So unless we can get money for something, which seems unlikely... Do you guys all hate Paravon? I'm not sure. How much money would they give us for this? 391. Not enough to recruit, so it's probably not worth it to risk anything. Alright. Man, I'm a little bit regretting not attacking Kuran now, because I felt like... Oh, wow. Bellacor is here, too. Uh, because I feel like we could have... Uh, uh, you know what? Move to Marine Marienburg, rather. Alright! We could have had a battle by now this episode. But oh well. We'll find one, I'm sure. You stay in the territory, I think. You need to heal up. At least we'll be moving to Festus' territory with full HP, which is gonna be needed because he's gonna plague us up and cause us to not get as much a casualty or punishment rate via said plague. Alrighty. Well, looks like another end turn. Unassigned skill points ignored, end turn. Let's uh, let's also get some more recruits for you. Well, then we had money. Ah, you couldn't quite reach our uh, our main stack here, but that's okay. We could also move Wolfram in to support Carl if we really wanted to. I'm just not sure that it's necessary. And well, 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 Ikit, he is actually going to attack us with two full stacks. Oh, man, I am now also regretting not giving these guys the extra swords and whatnot. But 
I'm reasonably confident that we can win this. We do have to watch out for the nuke ripping our defenses apart, but we do have so many troops that uh, we should be pretty good here. I would normally auto-resolve this because I don't think the enemy has too much of a chance, but this seems like it's too fun of a fight to ignore. So we are going to fight it and we're going to watch our range units slaughter those, uh, slaughter those rats. Even though I feel bad. I love you, Aiken. Huh, does this guy not make a speech? Oh, well, I guess he doesn't. Anyway, you know, I am so glad of this change that makes the, uh, uh, that makes enemies actually willing to attack forts now. It's just so great. These defensive battles are so rare in Manila, and they're just so darn fun watching the enemy units try to, uh, try to break through your defenses. We've got two stacks of rat-like or rodent beastmen arrayed against us, as well as this uh, suspicious technological advanced beastman leading them cackling away as he casts lightning and uh, tries to think of a place to cast a nuke so in that light because we have a nuke raid against us or rather uh, the enemy has a nuke available to them we've placed most of our units as far away from each other as uh, is appropriate so that a single nuke can't destroy multiple units we're gonna wait until it gets used his nuke and then at that point we will move the rest of the units up the walls where Wherein we, uh, wherein we need to. Otherwise, all of our huntsmen and archers and crossbows are deployed on those walls. They're going to be trying to focus down the rattling guns and anything else that is a particularly valuable target. Looks like a doom rocket flying in towards our battlements as well. And here we go. Uh, let's see what the enemy can do here. Looks like they've got some clan rats already moving towards the walls. They've sent some Gisales forward together with some rattling guns. Yeah, it looks like the AI still doesn't really understand how to use weapon teams in sieges, because that's a very bizarre thing to do. Granted, the Gisales wouldn't really accomplish too much, and neither would the rattling guns against the walls here, but nonetheless. That's still probably a waste of them, unless they're using their armored hides to cover for the uh, for the clan rats that are trying to rush the walls. And that said, those clan rats are not having a good time, at least not right now. Uh, Ikit's main army is relatively weak and quite damaged, but the second army is still worthy of concern. Ikit is also moving in himself together with the Doom players here, who look like they're going to head directly for the gate, while the rest of the enemy units try to uh, uh, try to continue you going up those ladders. Probably not going to end so well for them just as it handed, hasn't rather ended well already for various units. Aked is casting those repeated warp lightnings which is just a fantastic spell and gotta love it. And he is targeting our handgunners which is probably our most valuable unit other than the death jacks over there so he's doing a good job with that. That said, it's certainly not going to be enough for his first army to achieve anything, and the last of the clan rats plus Ikit himself will be seen off shortly. For whatever reason, it does look like these handgunners are unable to target Ikit, or at least have a difficult time targeting him. Ooh, there is the nuke coming down in the center of our gate, knocking out most of the crossbows that were standing atop it, and damn! You get this. Uh, you can get the effect on top of the wall as well. <laughs> Although it looks kind of pixelated on top of the walls, at least when you zoom in close. I feel like that that uh, effect should persist throughout the battle. But yeah, the nuke just melted uh, this one unit. You can still see them standing, and like you can see the blood spots and like the like little regimented sort of uh, pattern that they were standing in. So that's pretty fun. Now, the unit actually did survive, though just barely, with 21 units and two. 47 HP, and then same slightly for the crossbows, so none of those guys are dead, despite the uh, use of the nuke. A waste ticket. A shame and a waste for you, buddy. And now he is going to trundle back to his second stack, which is coming, and which has a bunch of more or less close to full HP units. Clan rats still climbing up, but having a difficult time dealing with our... Uh, uh, with our handgunners here, especially as these clan rats are out of vigor, having to climb those walls. 
So the handgunner should do pretty okay against them, even if they are a ranged unit. It could still get in the way, and even though we are targeting him with pretty much everything we have, it looks like we are unable to bring him down as the uh, the units are unable to lead him with the ranged attacks. And it seems like every shot misses, even though he is moving in a straight line. You guys need to learn to aim. Come on now. Same with you, towers. We really need to upgrade these uh, forts so that they have cannon towers, as they would probably at least get a few shots in there. Anyway, uh, let's see what's coming in. More clan rats, and clan rats are plenty, I should say. A decent pile of them moving in towards this side of the wall in particular, which means we will have to try to move a decent amount of units towards this direction, and we've already, as we can see, begun doing so. We can also start moving more units up onto those walls, as once again, he only had one nuke available and thus we are no longer in danger of having half our army blown up in a single use of it. Would you guys please stop missing every single shot? There you go, that's better. <laughs> Hopefully you can see that Grey Seer off before he does too much damage. He is going to cast a Warp Lightning on one of our units in the middle of the settlement, but that will be him gone afterwards. It does look like a decent amount of enemy clan rats and such are hanging back all the way back here for some reason. Though I don't imagine that they would have done too much damage even if they didn't hang back. But nonetheless, I'd love to see them attack and break themselves upon the walls just like the rest of these forces do. So less power to them for doing so. Alrighty, now the Death Jacks are going to move away from the uh, wall as they have actually run out of ammunition. 102 kills, not so bad and 13,000 damage, but they do seem quite light on ammunition, don't they? Hmm. I guess we, uh, I guess we need some ammunition upgrades. This, with pistol core, and I wonder if the rank seven will also give us addition, uh, additional ammunition. Cause yeah, that is definitely a little bit light. I wonder, do the archers have less ammunition than the crossbows do, or the same? Huntsman, well, this is unclear. We'll have to see it after the end of the battle. Anyway, another enemy unit of Night Runners moves in towards the uh, walls and gets absolutely ripped apart. We also do have these Doom Flayers from Ickit's main army who have been working on that gate for a while, but without a battering ram, and they're just not going to have an easy time in breaking through. And we can, of course, sally out once the gate gets sufficiently close to being damaged. More clan rats are, however, moving in, and this time they will be heading up those walls. Fortunately, we do have the Free Company Militia up here, which are pretty darn okay at holding the walls, in part because they can fire at the same time as they fight in melee, and especially against enemy units with, uh, uh, with low vigor due to climbing, uh, that's very much to their advantage. I actually think that uh, using Free Company Militia for defending walls will be pretty effective throughout the campaign. We may want to get some more of them in these walled locations, especially once they have the Emperor's Finest buffing them. Do they still... Uh, uh, Free Company Militia used to be able to double dip into Pistol Core and to Emperor's Finest. I think that's no longer the case, but I gotta double check. I remember being disappointed when their ability to double dip was uh, taken away. Mostly because I really like the unit. Um, but either way, they'll still probably be very much worth it in terms of keeping a few of them up on these walls. And the rats are just not having a good day. Let's see, bounce power is about 85, maybe 90% in our favor, and every rat that manages to climb up just gets ripped apart by the free company. And then the second unit of Free Company is standing back here helping out by shooting those rats that do get through. Though we do get a few extra shots into our own units that we do have to be careful with. It looks like the damage isn't all that much as this unit is pretty much at full HP as well. And let's see, anybody else moving towards those walls or are they all starting to give up? The, uh, the Doom Flayers we did sally out against and I'm pretty sure that they are, oh there they are, moving throughout the city and trying to escape. Would have been nice to actually destroy them, um, but uh, didn't actually turn out very well. Our Lord unfortunately didn't really accomplish much though. And basically no kills and he was standing up on this wall uh, this entire time, he just wasn't able to do any damage. It does seem that the uh, that these lords are just so vastly inferior to arch lectors. 
And but nonetheless, he does upgrade huntsmen and archers, and since we have such a huge pile of huntsmen and archers that we wasted all this money recruiting, I do feel like we should use them or continue using them in this army just so he can continue buffing them up. I'm still unsure whether we should actually bother to delete the archers and completely replace them all with huntsmen, even though huntsmen are vastly superior. Alrighty, these poor clan rats. I think they should have seen what happened to the first few thousand clan rats and not even bothered that attempt here. I think the nuke did by far the most damage. Allied troop count, we've lost about 350 troops here. And I think 240-ish, probably around 200 of them, were killed by the nuke by virtue of destroying basically two full, uh, two full units. So the rest of the enemy army really did not accomplish all that much here. Well, I guess they'll keep coming. These beastmen are tenacious. You're defending your homes well enough, my friend. Good job. Alrighty, and it looks like these guys are gonna climb up the walls as well. These uh, these rats just ain't giving up. I guess they're slowly trickling in occasional units of clan rats from the ones that have been hanging back. A very odd strategy, but honestly, I feel like the AI just doesn't know what to do anymore. It's uh, Doom Flayers failed to take the gate. The gates are closed. The walls still hold. They just they just can't achieve anything with the rest of this. And another clan rat unit out. This unit is in scurry away, so we'll be gone as well shortly. And I love all the crossfires that we're able to get with the uh, with the various units. These guys try to climb only for the tower to shoot them in the back and for the archers to shoot them in the side. And there we go. Just like that, I do believe the battle is finally over. I wish my computer was uh, powerful enough to allow more uh, corpses to be uh, maintained on the field, but someday maybe I'll get an upgrade. I would have loved to see just like the piles upon piles of rats below the walls. I do wonder, huh, oh, I do wonder how many, uh, how many corpses can be on the field before it gets really crazy. But anyway, nonetheless, a very fun battle. I was hoping for a battle, and it looks like we certainly got one. I even decided to move the uh, Lord out here just so that he could try to draw in the rest of those units, because I was thinking maybe we're better off trying to uh, damage as many of them as they can, because they could very well come back, but it looks like they just want to run off. Ah. Uh. Interesting fight, a decisive victory, obviously, considering the relatively little damage dealt, and Ikit and his beastmen are out. Hey, we stole the Razor Standard. Very, very nice. Too bad we can't give a second one to Carl, because I'm sure he could make some good use of it. Uh, but I'm also sure that other forces can as well. Anyway, well done to our defenders against the forces of Ikit Claw, leading the strange rodent-like beastmen to attack our valiant defenders. Ah, oh, beastmen come in every shape and size these days. Uh, let us take the money for obvious reasons, because we need it. it looks like these guys are gonna back off. I doubt that they will attack again, but I suppose the possibility does still exist, and we do still have to keep that in mind. Otherwise, I guess we're advancing towards Festus. It looks like Lewin won't be declaring war on us right now, and what are you doing here? Caravan? Whose caravan are you? Ah, uh, don't tell me you're the Jade Custodians. Ah, oh, damn, Lucian's dead. Could have uh, gotten some money from them. Uh, enemy killed in battle. There's that Razor Standard, a fitting end for Ikit Claw, giving us a research rate bonus, which means we will be holding on to this lord. And, oh, what the heck is this? Grom the Paunch is here. Hmm. Will he attack, I wonder? But if he does, can he get through? What if he has another army that we can't see, though? I'm kind of tempted to give the recruiter, the rest of the recruiter's forces to him just in case. There's no way that he attacks us together with this stuff, is it? Is there? 
I doubt it. There's also the possibility that the Skaven actually don't go for Fort Berg Bray, but rather jump over through Grung Zint and try to go to Marienburg. Uh, so maybe we should keep Recruiter here. It sounds like this is going to significantly impact the, uh, uh, the defenders. I do wonder what is in Grom's army, though. Hmm, interesting. And yeah, looks like Kem is going to be coming back soon. He's nearly got two stacks again, which means Gregor will be having some more fun shortly. Now, whose caravan is this? This is the Jade Custodians. Yeah, okay. Uh, we can get a non-aggression pack with Paravon. I don't think anything else here we care about, at least not right now. Ice Court's nearly ready for an alliance. Should try to get that going as fast as possible as well. Straight up military alliance. What if we join your war against Bone Rattlers? now? We're not going to be fighting Draika. We'll let the uh, we'll let them all fight Draika themselves, and by them all, I mean our uh, our allies. And oh no, it looks like Draika will have destroyed Ostermark next turn. It's done for, unless her army is already badly damaged. But I'm not sure. But this is at the cost of uh, Serena Catron moving southward and into Draika's territory. Well. That's her problem, I guess. Yeah, it's probably a good thing then that we're going through this way because we can loop around, rescue Ostermark, and then move southward through Dreyka's territory, burning as we go, and then into Sylvania itself, leaving the Bretonian problem to itself. But yeah, Bretonia is an absolute shambles right now. Look at this. It's all chaos corrupted. There's green skin rebels holding castles. Uh, it's, it's nonsense. I'm glad that we got these forts early on. In fact, we probably will want to upgrade them soonish, as soon as we're capable of doing so, at any rate. Anyway, let's have Carl now move into Encamp Stance. He's going to start moving through this Chaos territory. And I guess, hmm, yeah, so the question is, Wolfram Kusterman, do you go and reinforce Carl? Or will Carl's army be enough? It really depends. No, either way, we'll see. Uh, well, from you can always come back. Just ferry these troops over for now. I think we're gonna need them to defend a little bit more. So you're gonna go right here. Although I suppose we could also use you to help Carl catch stuff. Hmm. Well, too late now. Carl, you have places to be, buddy. Uh, go here, then go into encamp stance and start moving out toward Middenstug. Uh, or towards Middenheim, eh, go this way. Oh, hello, Festus. All right, I'm glad I picked that direction. I do have to wonder what you're going to do. There's no way that he attack Vi attacks Weissman because we're right beside it. He might attack Middenheim. I wonder if he'd take it. If he takes it, we'll be able to attack him there next turn. That would be amazing. And we'd be able to return Middenheim to, the, uh, to Boris as well, which I'm sure he'll love us for. Although I'm sure he'll also be... Uh, Grumbly about it. Uh, let's see. Anything in terms of buildings? We have you coming up, Marienburg, in next turn for tier two. We have Recruiter, who probably wants to either go to Aleheart to recruit, or to sit here just in case Ikit comes down. We don't necessarily have to use him to recruit because we can use Bernhard to do it. Mm. Maybe then that's what we do. And if he's going to be recruiting great swords, they're going to take a while. They're so expensive, though. You know what? Maybe right now is not the time to recruit great swords. Maybe we get more, uh, more stuff that we need here. So let's get some more crossbows for you, like so. Is two enough? How many do we need here? Let's say ah, uh, we need to replace all the rest of these archers though. And the pikes will be replaced by swords. We probably also want a free company militia general. from you. You know what? Just go to Aleheart. Nah, don't do it. <laughs> I don't trust it. I want to see what it can does first. And then we'll figure that out. Uh, you can have, I guess, another sword? Or another crossbow. We're probably going to get more mileage out of the crossbow because we have mm, a decent amount of melee available out of this. And you can never have too many range in a fort. Alright, third crossbow it is then. I did reduce your uh, recruitment cost, did I not? Yes, I did. Alrighty, well with that, unfortunately, I think we're out of time. It looks like we will not be ending this turn because most likely Festus, or not Festus, Grom will either attack Fort Berg Bray 
or he will jump over it. If he jumps over it, we'll have Peter and Recruiter attack him together. Maybe you can even move in March stance, although it's somewhat less likely. It also makes me think that maybe we'll want to recruit more stuff here, but how many archers can we really use? I bet you can't recruit anything useful in Marienburg other than archers. We could give this guy pikes, but I'd honestly rather give him spears instead. He's already going to have six pikes from all of this stuff. Or four pikes, rather. Which is still probably too many as compared to the spears. Anyway, calling it here next time, we probably or possibly fight Grom the Paunch, and that would be useful because it gives us uh, extra relationship with the High Elves. And But more importantly, Carl tries to hunt down Festus to find out if he truly is the bestest at the end of the day. So stay tuned for all that. Don't forget to leave a like and comment. All glory to the algorithm. And I am so sorry I keep forgetting to cancel the technology. <laughs> and thanks for watching. I'm really bad at canceling it.